It's got two bones on the outside, just like a chicken wing, and then meat all around and in the inside. We'll leave that right there. Non-wanted dogs and cats. Sprays, <laughs> my. Low key, we see a vulture peeping out our iguanas right here, man. It made a hole right through the glove. That could have been my finger right there, dude. Oh my. Bruh. Oh, oh! Boy, looking like six nine mixed with mixed with twenty one savage there. Oh, with the <laughs> so the charcoal, we can bring it anywhere. Dum dum dum. Sub zero. Hit the connects and let's go. I've been hunting guanas from a real young age. Y'all know me from my YouTube page. Right here's my iguana rap. I be catching them with snares. I be catching them with traps. I'm so lucky to be living on my dreams. I love all the iguanas, the reds and the greens. Catching the iguanas, man, they're so much fun. Most climb trees and most like to run. Iguanas in my hand and now they're acting psycho. Sorry if I'm a smooth criminal like Michael. The real iguana man has arrived. Give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe. What's up YouTube, it's the Iguana Man. And today, I'm gonna be showing you guys how to remove trapped iguanas from your iguana traps. But after you get the iguana, you're not quite sure what to do with it. Today, we're gonna cover all that. YouTube, what is going on guys? It's the Iguana Man and I'm chilling with Iguana Dan. I'm gonna be showing you guys how to remove iguanas out of the cage after you done trap them. Oh yeah. I would recommend that you get some gloves. Reason being, these iguanas have been in this cage for maybe a couple hours and they're gonna have a lot of energy. And hey, now you guys can send me mail. The address is P.O. Box 190424 and that's in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, 33319. And oh my God, look, he's dripping on the glove, look, yo. Oh my gosh. Yo, he went through the glove, dude. Dude, this iguana's nails went through the glove, man. Look, look at that right there. It made a hole right through the glove. That could have been my finger right there, dude. So as you guys know, the iguana is an invasive species here in South Florida. Right here, that's, that's Gary. This is Gary right here? That's Gary, yeah. Oh. You guys, everybody at home say hi to Gary the iguana. Alligators and crocodiles, get how they the take the let's get it. It's kind of like the same thing right here. It's for the safety of us and for the animals. Oh, check this little guy out, guys. It appears that he's missing a piece of his tail. Look at, look at his tail. Oh, look at that. Nice grab, bro. You grabbed him just like a cat, how a cat would grab a, a kitten, right? <laughs> just right in the back of the neck. It's a catahoula mixed with a iguana. I don't know. But check him out, though. Check out his eyes right there. This is a rare iguana hunting dog, guys. Check out those eyes. One for night vision, one for day vision. And then we have this dog right here. This is just the backup. So this dog, if this dog is getting issues with the giant iguanas, this dog is gonna come and have his back, aren't you? What's up, YouTube? It's the Iguana Man, and we are chilling with Gordo Loke. What's up, man? Straight from California, so it's his first week back, so I figured best thing to do for the homie, guys, is we gonna have a little barbecued iguana. As y'all know in California, man, they ain't got iguanas. What y'all got out there? Iguana and dog and cats. Sprays, <laughs> motherfucker. That's how you do it. That's it. And you guys know you guys can't eat those out there. So me and the homie, we finna clean up the pool a little bit, get this area nice and organized. And soon, guys, we gonna have some iguanas on the grill. The homie was gone, man. The boy got yatted up a little bit. Y'all can see, man, that's some really impressive artwork you got there, man. Dang. Looking. Boy looking like 6 and 9 mixed with mixed with 21 Savage there with the little thing. Gangsta on camera though, but this is a G in real life right here, y'all. But yeah, we're gonna let's, let's get everything settled up. These are the two iguanas that we're gonna be feasting on today. Two nice red iguanas. We got the barbecue. Uh the sun is shining, that's a beautiful sign. Alright, y'all. So I figured the best way to start this barbecue is with some nice ice cold refreshments. Here we have some red stripe straight from Jamaica. Now we got our barbecue right here. We got our nice marble countertop, and we got this beautiful pool. Oh, what's up, what's boy? Up, what's up? What's doing? up? Hey, hey, what's up, homie? Oh, you know what we're gonna be doing today, man? We're gonna be trying to grill the guana. You, you down? Uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, man. So I think we gotta set up this grill, man. We're getting kind of hungry, and uh, we don't want this rain to come back out here. So let's go ahead. Uh -huh. 
People ask me all the time, what do I like better, gas or charcoal? Me personally, I like the charcoal, man. Reason being, it's more portable, it's more efficient, and it gets a lot better flavor than that gas grill. So the charcoal, we can bring it anywhere, and we can make a grill anywhere. Instead of bringing tanks and all this other heavy equipment, it's just more convenient, and it's got the better taste. I made an observation. Out of nowhere, the fire went out, and that's a good sign to tell that the coals are ready. Also, you can see how the caps are nice and white. So that means all of the chemicals are burnt out, and this coal is ready. For we got some Guinness stout right here. So we are going to go ahead. And we're going to season these iguanas. So let's beer. Soak in there for a little bit. And then it's going to be time for the grill. Drop one right there. Now we gotta just cover it up, boss. So, it is the moment of truth. We got our iguanas. Now it's just all a matter of dropping the lid and letting these guys smoke up. We will come back and check on these iguanas here in a little bit. We're gonna let them do their thing, take their time. Remember, it's two iguanas. So we wanna make sure they're cooked all the way through. At charcoal, we got wood chips, we got Guinness, and we got two fire roasted iguanas. How long is it gonna take? 40 minutes. 40? Yeah. Dude, it's 20, bro. Oh, oh! Oh, oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, shit. All right, so right now we're in this pool, man. The water temperature is kind of icy, but the crazy thing is outside is really hot. So outside is hot, the water temperature is icy. That's kind of ridiculous. But me, I'm not complaining because I've been hitting the gym. Your boy's been trying to get, uh, and your body, my body is really sore. So this right here is like an ice bath. So to me, like, it's like probably like what, 60 degrees in here? Dum, dum, dum. Sub-Zero. Oh yeah, you guys see that right there. Everything is just bubbling up. And that's the advantage of cooking the iguana with the it's skin the connection. on. Let's get it. Basically, the skin acts like a cooking barrier, seals all that moisture and all that juice in, and that heat. We're gonna, we're gonna finish it off with the lid off. Let it do its thing. Go right here. And just. Mind you, this thing is really hot. It's been roasting. Just gonna rip that tail off right there, just like that. You guys can see the meat. Ooh, it's a little hot. The meat should just peel right off. Right out, the skin should just peel right off like a banana. So go ahead, work it down. And I would advise you do this when the iguana is cool. Right now, I'm just so hungry. And look, it should just peel just right off like a banana. See how it's just peeling? Perfect. Look at this, check this out. Look at that, oh yeah. The meat just shreds. It's a little bit easier to do this when it's cool, but like I said, I'm really hungry. And all this shredded iguana tail right here. We're gonna, matter of fact, what we're gonna do is we're gonna just shred all this iguana right now. Whew. Now, a lot of you guys at home might think I'm crazy for doing this, but I want you guys to understand something. Iguanas are an invasive species out here, and I'm trying to show you guys that this can be a sustainable food source for everybody. If you're in Florida, there's no reason why you should be going hungry when there's plenty, plenty of fresh iguana running around. All you gotta do is learn how to hunt Prepare and cook, and you're in the game. Meat just peels right, skin just peels right off. You're just peeling it off, man. Look at that. Look at that, perfect. Now you got yourself a little iguana wing right here. <laughs> it's got two bones on the outside, just like a chicken wing, and then meat all around and in the inside. We'll leave that right there. For me? Yeah. I'm gonna give it a go. Wow. Look at this, bro. Chicken wing. Yeah, Iguana wing. Look at the pure meat in the wing, baby. Wow. Oh, 
Wow. All right, y'all, so real quick, whoever out there says iguanas are not worth eating, look at all the boneless meat we got off these two iguanas. This has got to be at least three, four pounds of meat right here, guys. And with this meat, you can do a lot of stuff. You can stew it, you can fry it, you can eat it with barbecue sauce, you can throw it in a soup, you can make a taco. You can do a lot of stuff with this iguana right here, guys. And this is, like I said, this is all pure meat from two iguanas. All right, guys, so the weather is taking an unexpected turn. It's about to start raining. So before we get all the camera gear wet and I get wet and I get sick and I can't bring you guys no more videos, we are gonna end this video on that note. You guys seen how we did it over here, man? We roasted the iguanas with the skin on. You guys see how we basically took the meat off all the iguanas. We skinned it, uh, we cleaned it, we roasted it, we skinned it, took all the meat off of it. That shit's good, right? That was good in every time. <laughs> recipes I'm gonna surprise you guys with in a couple days or time, guys. Just keep on <laughs> catching. <laughs>